Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, we are in a new week, and hey, we are in the month of June. And the Lord has given us His word, and He says, I am taking you into my rest. So what does it mean to enter into God's rest? If you're going to enter into God's rest, then you need to understand what he is talking about. It's the most problem with a lot of believers is, just like John said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. So you see, we have to understand how he is in the light, first of all, before we decide how we want to walk in the light. He says when we do that, then there is fellowship. And when that fellowship takes place, our sins or inefficiencies is wiped off by the blood of Jesus. So it's important to understand what God means when he talks about entering into his rest. Praise God. Now, that's the series of teaching I'm going to begin from today. Listen, you don't want to miss any part of this at all all praise god because it's going to revolutionize your faith i'm telling you the truth i'm going to be sharing some things that would make you think and and that's the whole purpose of god's word god's word doesn't come for you to relax and say oh yeah 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 god's word is comes to you to jack you up and say what is this true and then you begin to meditate on it. Praise God. All right then. So before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to make demand for our daily bread. Now hear me. When we make this demand, release your faith. Now what does it mean when we say release your faith? You know, sometimes you hear this thing, oh, release your faith right now and call forth. Release your faith right now and pray. What does it mean to release your faith? Some of you have not thought to ask. Yes, so no, release your faith simply means mean what you say or mean what you're about to say, knowing that what you're about to say will come to pass. It's see, when we say release your faith, you release it in your heart. I hear what I'm saying. So you have this understanding that what I'm about to do now, what I'm about to say now, is surely going to come to pass. And that takes its root from Mark 11, 23 and 24. Jesus said, Verily, very I say unto you, if you have faith, you would say to this mouth, and believe in your heart that whatsoever you say will surely come to pass. And you shall have whatsoever you say. That's what Jesus himself told us. So, uh, releasing your faith is understanding that what you say will come to pass. Having this understanding, that are you ready to release your faith and make demand for your daily bread? Let's do it right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Miracles are taking place. Your needs are being met today in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right, now, now I want to take us to the foundation of rest. And... Anything, any principle, any topic of God's word that you want to know how true it is or how established it is, you've got to find its foundation in the book of Genesis. Now, what we're saying, the book of Genesis, actually, because the book of Genesis is not really dated, you understand what I'm saying? Actually, when we're talking about the book of Genesis, we're talking about the Garden of Eden. So everything, every truth that you, you, you want to establish, you've got to find its roots in the Garden of Eden. Now, why do we say the Garden of Eden? Hey, that's the last place we had perfection in God's plan. Very short story, but there are lots of things that, are, that took place in the Garden that we need to examine. And, and, and it reveals 
a whole lot of things from um, in, in script from scriptures about God's plan. Now I want to take you to Genesis chapter two. Let's go to Genesis chapter two, and from verse one, Genesis chapter two, from verse one. I want you to follow me carefully. Like I told you, don't miss any of this broadcast, any of this series. Entering into God's rest. Praise God. It says. Thus the heavens and the earth, from verse 1 now, Genesis 2. Thus the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth, and all the host of them were finished. Now you see that word there, thus, T-H-U-S. That word simply means, this is how, or that was how. Referring to what has been known or said before, or what is about to be said. So when someone used the word does, he is actually referring to something that has happened before or something he is about to tell you. Right? But now in this case, he says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Were finished. So he used the word where so referring to the past so he said this is how the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished now you want to know how were they finished hold on with that thought i'm going to bring you back to it but let's go further to see something and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has done and then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made now take note of this he says the heavens and the earth were finished this is how they were finished and on the seventh day god ended take notes it says god ended his work on the seventh day and he rested on the seventh day now he brought those two together he ended his work and he rested that there's a reason now the reason is because he didn't rest because he was tired from the work he has done no that's not the meaning of the word rest there that was used he rested to show that he was done, you know, resting, handing off, like, I'm, I'm done. That's the, that's the rest he took. I'm done. So it's not like, wow, man, I've been working for the past six days. Hey, guys, <laughs> I think I need to rest. No, sir. No, 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 no. Remember, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. So how did he rest? Praise <laughs> God. Was he tired? No, he wasn't tired. He rested, meaning he handed off. He was done. Then it brings us to the question, what did he do? Praise God. What did he do that he rested? Oh, he was creating the heavens and the earth. Okay, now we go back to that verse 1 to see what he says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. So how were they finished? Now you go to chapter 1 to see what he was referring to. Are you following me? Now, in chapter 1, you're going to discover this thing. Do the study yourself. You're going to discover that God spent the whole of chapter 1 speaking. God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And that was all the work God was doing. Is <laughs> God. I was like, ah, no, he was created. No. I want you to understand this. I come shape he cover has it The Lord will give you understanding in truth about what we are about to share. Now, he says, I told you something. He did the whole of chapter one. When God was walking, six days he was walking. The only work God was doing was speaking. And when he finished speaking, hey, hear me, no pain moved. Nothing was formed. 
Nothing, nothing. Everywhere was still dark. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 tells us that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now that's how everything remained until God rested. And so what was God creating? Aha! He was creating with his words. Now, listen. Don't think God was creating and say, let there be light. And then he waited. And then I, and everywhere now became lit. And like, whoa, aha. And you know, but God said, you know, the Bible said, God looked at it and said, it was good. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hey, Kone, He didn't see the physical thing before he said it was good. So what was God looking at before? All God did every day after his creation. Because that's what you're going to find in chapter 1. And when he says, and God saw that it was good, the next thing he says, the evening and the morning was the first day. So that tells you that he looks at every work he has done at the end of the day. Because the moment he inspects it and okays it, then that day ends. You see that now? Now, so what was he doing? What was he seeing? He was speaking. And when he is done speaking, he will check to be sure he has said everything that needs to be said concerning that thing or concerning that day. Now, that's the reason the first thing he spoke was light. Now, the light he spoke was not the sun. It was not the moon. It was not the stars. No. You can find that out that he created them later. So when he said, let there be light, what light appeared? Because the light said, let there be light, and there was light. So what does it mean, and there was light? He didn't say, let there be light, and light now became. No, understand the phrase, say, let there be. Because the light be, and the next he said, and light was. He didn't say, and light became. No, he says, light be, and light was. Now that's to tell you that he I call it shine. It's not like when he said light be. Ah, you know, things were now forming and moving and light now became. No, the light he called forth was the plan that he had in his heart for the earth and the heavens that he's about to create. The plan that he had from his heart from the beginning. Now that's what, when he says light be, the best way to explain this is with an architectural model. Right? And, you know, most architectural models follow the plan, right? So now you create that model and put it on the table. Maybe it's a complex you're about to build. And so you create it and put it on the table with cardboards and, and stuff. And then you put it on the table and someone looks at that and says, wow, this, this is going to be a beautiful place. What's this? Oh, this is going to be the, the, the hall for the... Oh, what's this? Oh, this is the football pitch oh this is going to be the um, accommodation area and this is going to be we say, wow this is going to be great <laughs> praise god now you haven't seen the physical thing yet but you are already saying this is going to be a great thing now that's exactly what god did so when he says light be it was his plan that appeared before him so now god began to speak according to the plan that he was looking at. Are you following me now? So everything he spoke, so he, now, you know Genesis 1 was just giving us a summary. So it's like God just woke up and said, let there be a famine between the heavens and let it divide the waters from above from the waters beneath. And then it was so. And I said, ah, I'm done for today, man. Let me go rest. Then the next day he comes again and say, oh, let the, let the waters under the heaven gather themselves onto one place and let the dry, dry, dry land appear. And it was so like, oh, wow. Okay, ah, I'm done. Let me go and think of what I want. You think that's what God was doing? No, sir. Every detail. Every detail. So when God, for example, created the firmament, he spoke to the clouds. He, he, he spoke how the clouds would be. He spoke the thickness of the cloud. He, he spoke how the cloud would respond to rain. He spoke how the cloud would respond in different seasons. He spoke every detail. Now, the book cannot carry everything, so he just gave us a summary. Right? Okay, so now, God spent six days speaking. At the end of each day, 
he's going to look at what he has said and the plan. That means he doesn't forget what he said says. So he wasn't speaking carelessly. I call it Shabbat Agada. So now listen. He spoke and spoke day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. And after day six, he finished. So now we come to chapter two and verse one. And he says, this is how the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. How were they finished? By God speaking. Now I take it to another level of this. So after he was done speaking, and verse 2, chapter 2, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God, now look at verse 3 and take note of something here. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now sometimes when you read the scriptures, you wonder if the, whoever the writer is is just playing with words. No, they are not playing with words. They are careful with everything they wrote. Now understand something, first of all. There is a truth that they are trying to communicate, right? And so when you see some of these things, what should come to your mind is it's, it, it's a signal that he was trying to say something here. For example, he says, verse 3, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So why did he use God the second time? Why didn't he just use the word he? You see? Now, let me read it and put he. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he, he, he rested from all his work which he had created and made. Now, it would have sounded okay. But then the last word that he would have used, he, he now used God instead of he. Now, when you read things like this, it should make you think that the writer is communicating something. Because understand, this thing was gotten by revelation. The writer wasn't there when these things were taken. He wasn't writing what he was seeing. He was writing what was revealed to him. Now, sometimes this happens to us. When you're trying to communicate a vision, you see, it's like you want to say, and I saw a bright light. Now, when you say, I saw a bright light, it will come to your mind that the person will be thinking of the normal light they know. No, you will not want to emphasize on this light. Or you say, I saw something like a light. You could have just said, I saw light. But when you say, I saw something like a light, he is trying to get you to look at that light very well because tomorrow in interpretation, you can refine now that it wasn't light. It was something bigger than light or it was something different from light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's why hmm, sometimes prophets speak like that. See, now here there is a reason that he used the word God the second time instead of using the word he. There's a reason. And I'm going to show you that reason because it's very important you get this. I'm going to show you that reason, but not today because my time is up. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, I beg you, follow this series. You'll be amazed at the things you would learn. And I pray for you right now. Lord, fill everyone watching me right now with your truths. Fill them with understanding. And let the truth of your word be made manifest in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.